So I watched it live with my Telegram channel yesterday. And one thing that really stuck out to me was uh, Governor Little's emphasis on public schools and the amount of money that he wants to spend for public school infrastructure. And that sounds great, but like the previous guests were saying, it's shifting of budgets. Where are we getting this $2 billion for the infrastructure? And I just have a problem with the whole funding of public education in the first place. One thing that really stuck out to me in the middle of his speech was his comments about wanting to you know, really expand school choice, but only for public schools. So it was wild. Um, yeah, do we have that clip? Uh, is that the clip that we have? I will continue to support Let's a fair, responsible, transparent, and accountable approach to expanding school choice in Idaho, one that doesn't draw resources away from our public schools. That clip, I wrote it down line by line because that was so fascinating to me. Yes, we want you, the parents, to decide how your kids go to school as long as it's in public school. And we've seen over the past couple of years and really for a long time before that, that enrollment numbers are down. For example, the Coeur d'Alene School District just had their latest school board meeting last night and they actually had to say their enrollment numbers are down not only in their particular district but enrollment numbers are down unexpectedly across the state which is really cutting into their funding that they're getting from the state whoa, so whoa, whoa. Hold, hold on hold on hold on so you're so so did they give like an exact number for Coeur d'Alene school district no just, I actually had to do down. the work myself yeah it's down and, and, so okay. by school within the district almost 600 students just this year over last year. 600 less? Yeah, than last year, which was down from the year prior. COVID kind of messed everything up, but everything is still down. It keeps going down and down, and the funding keeps going up and up. That's what I have a problem That's with. Incredible. That's incredible, especially considering during Governor Little's speech yesterday, um, I believe he said that that Idaho is among one of the fastest growing states because people keep moving here. Uh, there, oh, we, we've seen a here. dramatic increase of people moving to Kootenai County, to Coeur d'Alene, to all these places across the state. Yet public school numbers are dropping. What 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 explains that? Um, I'm not sure. Idaho has one of the best um, homeschooling. Uh, unrestricted access in the country. Um, I know a lot of people move here because of that coming from very restrictive public school states. I'm not going to name any, but the public school system is, in my opinion, getting worse and worse. Like I think it was Tammy Nichols had said that they're spending more money, but there is no accountability like you were talking with Maria about. There's no accountability for where this money is going. They're just throwing it at the schools, hoping something sticks. And yet test scores are down. They're stagnant. And this is for from before COVID even, so we can't use that as an excuse. And they're still giving more money. Now, because the funding for this for this year is down from the state, um, the school district, Coeur d'Alene School District that I'm in, they got word that the State Department of Education is actually requesting a supplemental appropriation bill to be passed in the legislature through JFAC to help um, recoup some of that loss from the lower enrollment numbers. So just all my friends in the legislature, just be prepared for that because they want to, in those one-time spending bills, kind of recoup the numbers of funding that they're not getting because enrollment is down. And that's part of the yeah. overall fiscal responsibility that Governor Little is touting that his Idaho Works plan is fiscally strong and fiscally responsible, but we're seeing that the amount of money that he is proposing to spend, where is this money coming from? And in my opinion, it is not fiscally responsible and is not what a good Republican should be doing according to the Idaho Republican platform, you know? So that's, yeah. that's and, my problem. And you just, you you posted an article um, on the meeting last night, and uh, can you walk us through what people can expect when we look at this article? Well, it's based. Oh, there's so many numbers, right? And not a lot of people, or sometimes the numbers get jumbled in your head. But basically, 
Um, the the estimated funding that the school district was supposed to be getting from the state is down. They're down five support units overall just because enrollment numbers are down. But it is an unexpected statewide enrollment decline. That's according to the finance director's narrative about these updates. Um, however, and so they're paying too many teachers for not enough students. However, they are seeing an increase in special education um, uh, students. And so they need an increase for those projects and teachers. But um, the other, th they're just not getting enough revenue for that, according to them. The other thing is that their expenditures are up by almost $2 million than what they had previously estimated. And don't forget, the, the fiscal year just started July 1st. So we're barely even halfway through. If we are halfway through, I can't even do math right now. But we are already down. We were supposed to have an 800000 surplus in our in our general fund budget. Now, because of all of these um, funding woes and expenditures, we are now down almost $800,000 in a deficit. So Coeur d'Alene School District One has a lot of work to do. Yeah. And hard decisions to make. And I'm sure the school districts around the state are having to do the same thing. Yeah. All right, Aaron, thank you again for coming on. Such great information. You do, you do stellar work. Remind everybody where we can follow you. Absolutely. So you had my website. It's kcspectator.com. I do focus on Kootenai County. However, there is a, a state little flair to everything too. Telegram, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all KC Spectator. And yeah, we're pretty lively on Telegram. I kind of lurk on Twitter, but I do post my stuff everywhere. So you can find me at all. And TikTok. I'm sorry. I'm yes, I have TikTok. I'm sorry. But you can find me there as well, KC Spectator. No, that's great. All right. Thank, thank you, Aaron. We'll have you back. Have a great one.